This is Gil. This is Bob. What you got there, man? Well, just make yourself at home. We're doing a little video. This is Gil. He's come all the way from New Jersey. He's making a documentary about uh, Detroit in the late 60s music scene. We were just talking about the inspiration, why, why the Stooges got together, how and why. And for reasons thereof. Um, to play, I, everyone was, I was deeply um, into music by then and dedicated to it, but still uh, learning how to play. And of course, being friends with Iggy through the years, through the prime movers from high school, after the bands we were in just ran through and, and quit, we decided that we'd do something on our own. So we rented a band house, which we'll see later on today. It was a summer sublet, and we just got our little instruments together. We had a little, which was really a coal cellar, where it was, the house is old, where they used to just dump the coal in. We spent hours cleaning it out, set up a little practice room, and just started practicing. And that went on for about a year. But the... Uh, this is in Ann Arbor. This is in Ann Arbor. So you just practiced? How were you able to do that? You, didn't, you weren't playing that. Well, we didn't play jobs at that time. We just thought we'd get together and see what happens. We want to do some totally different kind of music. Being that we were not that accomplished on our instruments, it started out Iggy playing uh, a Farfisa electric organ or a little keyboard. I was playing bass with fuzz tone, wah wah, that kind of stuff. My brother was playing like a homemade drum set, which was a 50 gallon or a five gallon oil drum and no 50 gallon oil drum and some timbales and a snare drum. I, mean, I don't think he even had any cymbals. So we just plugged away at that for a long time until we wound up finally uh, playing our first show on Halloween of 68, I believe. 67. 67. See, you guys know more about it than me now. Man. And, and what was that like? When, where was your, where was your, I mean, it was like bizarro music. Where, what kind of influences were you having influencing your, uh, your music? Well, actually, we liked all the good stuff, Stones, Yardbirds, Kinks, but then we also liked uh, John Coltrane and, J of course, Jimi Hendrix. I don't think that uh, we tried to copy or any any band was influencing our music. We just did what we did. It wasn't like we were, hey, I want to sound like this or I want to sound like that. Probably for me, at that time, the, the bizarre music was just because we were testing waters. So what was your first concert like? First one was the Grandy Ballroom. Well, that one on Halloween. Oh, that one? Well, it was imitation only. It was at this house on State Road. Of course, John Sinclair, members of the MC5, and whoever they brought along. It was basically just in a little room, probably not much bigger than this whole space. We set up our amplifiers played rather loud. I, I just found out from reading another book that John Sinclair came with this guy that rolled up many joints. I remember people just kind of laying on the floor in pillows and what, just getting high and watching what we're doing. I remember we were incredibly loud and we were, I was blowing fuses left and right. So after we went through about three or four fuses, that was the end of the show because, hey, no more fuses, man. But it was more like a party atmosphere, which later on Jesse Crawford called became the Zenta New Year, which was Halloween. Ah. It was, I was playing bass with Fuzz Tone and Wah Wah, and that's before Dave was even in the band. My brother had his homemade drum set, and Iggy was playing, uh, we got at a pawn shop for like, I think it was 10 bucks, this real crummy little wooden like Hawaiian guitar, where we open tuned it, and he was just playing it with slide and stuff. If you call it the first job, it was more like um, party, but we wanted to play in front of someone, but we didn't want to go out and say, hey, here's a club, let us play. Probably, and it was hard, we were lucky that there was a Grandy Ballroom, and we had a chance to play there because of the MC5. A lot of times we got to open up for them, or be the opening act. Russ Gibb also, we must thank, many thanks to him for giving us an opportunity to... Um, be able to play in front of people at that stage of uh, our musical development because 
we were just learning our instruments, but we didn't care. We didn't want to do regular songs, so we just did a show. It was more of a show kind of thing. Just get up there and, like I say, let one go. We used to call it let one go. Just get up, get up there and just do whatever comes naturally. What would you do? Um, well, of course, you know Iggy's antics. That was his letting one go. I would like a lot of feedback. I broke guitars, and not even on purpose. I remember one time I borrowed this guy's guitar thinking maybe I would buy it. And it just went poing. The neck just separated from, well, here it is. I don't, I don't want it, you know. Where'd the name the Stooges come from? I came up with that because I'm a big fan of the Three Stooges. So then you started hitting the Grammys. Yeah. There was a, about a good year, a, a period before we actually went to the, played at the Grandy Ballroom. I can't remember exactly who got the job, it was probably through John Sinclair or, or Jimmy Silver, who was our manager at that time, I'm sure. Um, but that started the whole Grandy thing, which was great, because we were basically almost like the house band. We'd always get to be the opening act. We got to see many major acts and got to develop our style there. Um, like uh, I was reading where I blood, sweat, and tears, they didn't want to play with the MC5, so they, they didn't, wouldn't let them play with them, so they had you open up, and you destroyed them. And like a lot of the, like whenever these incoming bands, the Detroit bands would destroy them. Now, was that like a conscious attempt? Or oh no, not at all. You know, we were really <clears throat> apprehensive. It was our first job, and we were whoa. You can imagine being nervous is part of playing. If I didn't get nervous, it would take that Nervousness gives you that edge. So we never were ever out to go, hey, we're going to destroy these guys. Probably the MC5 thought that way at times because they were more musically accomplished. They had sort of a, we, we're the kick-ass band, we're going to go out there and stomp ass. We never thought that. We just went out there and did our own thing. And uh, let's see, uh, like people describe your music as like a wall of sound. So was it was it, was it like a wall of frustration? What was the music trying to trying to express? Um, it was just a group of individuals. Just we weren't trying to really express anything. We weren't really frustrated. Um, and once again, like I say, just the thrill of going out there and getting in front of people and just doing something. Let one go. Where'd the idea for the songs come from? Daily life, like no fun, you know, real cool time, uh, not right. They're just things that we came up with, sayings, catchphrases that were, hey, this is no fun, you know. Hey, she, she's not right. So Jim jumped on that, Jim being Iggy. Um, they just really came from everyday life. We were, we'd get bored a lot. We were a bored bunch of... Uh, Youngsters. And so you make up these songs. Yeah, and we make up these songs. So like, like Little Doll. That was uh, in New York. That was written after we'd already done about five songs for the first Electra album. And, excuse me, <clears throat> Jack Holzman listened to it and said, uh, there's not enough songs. So we go, oh yeah, we've got more. So I locked myself in the hotel room. You got more? No. I locked myself in the hotel room and came up with like three more things to pad it out. And it was all done in like one day, or one evening actually. Then we rehearsed it the next day and then recorded it the next day. But Little Dow was just Iggy. That wasn't, uh, you know, he just came up with that for this particular piece of music. Like, I want to be your dog. And well, that's, that's something we would always say, hey, hey I want to be your dog. You've got a chick that's really hot, you know. That's the ultimate compliment, saying, hey, you can do anything. What? He wants to ask you a question, but I doubt if, I don't know if, if she'll have her hair done by the time. Yeah, it was guys just that liked each other hanging around and uh, just doing our thing. We'd play on weekends. 
everyone would go to school and then we would get together and practice and we'd go out and play jobs for the sake only of the band. We were just guys experiencing life together. Chemistry, uh, how can you explain it? It's just that we fit our lifestyles. Just Any shows that in particular come to mind or any uh, examples that, that, that like, exemplify the Stooges? Everything. All of it. <laughs>